Want to know how to catch this late winter into spring? This is the magic right here. All right, this is the magic. Let me show how I fish this in shallow water, New Jersey. Let's go. All right, folks, you ready to go catch some late winter into spring crappies? It's getting warmer and you don't need that float to fish during this time of the year. I mean, you should still carry a few just in case because you never know. I mean, I have bluebird skies right here. It was uh, tough for a bit, but once I found them, you know, I was catching them pretty much a good amount of time, all right? But anyway, hair jigs is great, and I portrayed that before, right? For late winter into spring, but you can always use something else because not everyone likes to tie their own hair jigs, nor they can't find good ones at affordable prices. So what's the next good alternative? You get a jig head, right? Somewhere between the 116th to 132nd ounce. And use these guys right here. The new Micro Finesse Z-Man Stingers. All right, Stinger Z, Stingers, whatever you want to call it, all right? So anyway, you rig this up and I'm using the 115th Mushroom Jig, right? And I am fishing on BFS. You guys can use spin, doesn't matter, okay? But what I want to express is that you have to have a rod that is super sensitive and what I'm portraying today is the Dragon, the QLC602 Ultralight. Two-piece rod, graphite rod. It has a fast tip, but it has a moderate bend, so it will keep those crappies pinned, right? I have the Dark Wolf Ultra from Sonoya, their bait finesse reel, their most ultralight one um, that I own, because they have the Genius and uh, it's pretty much equivalent. I have uh, Varivis 8, they're uh, 0.6 go, so this is uh, still pretty thin stuff. And I have four pound sunlight monofilament, all right? And the key of fishing these lures right here is you cast it out there where the fish are. You guys should use a fish finder, size structure scan. It'll help you find where those fish are at. And the key is you just let it drop slow, have just a little bit of tension in the line, slack line, watch line, whatever you guys want to do, right? But with this super sensitive tip right here, as it drops down to the strike zone, you just pop it back up, pop it back up, and it keeps it in a stretch zone, right? Because, um, you know, there's all these other baits out there, like, you know, spoons, they catch them, right? If they're not uh, active, they won't be chasing. So being able to yo-yo this in front of them keeps it in a strike zone a lot longer. And when you yo yo when you know, when you lift the lure up and it slowly drop back down, you gotta have that sensitive tip, and this rod will do it. So let's get out there and do some slaying, and, uh, Maybe we'll land some big bass too, because you know, they'll get hungry too. So let's do it. All right, paddle back to the hot spot where all the fish are at, by the dam, all right? And we're gonna throw this small little jig. Stock reel, Sonoya, Dark Wolf Ultra. I did, however, take the bearings out, flushed it, and put the Dulucil on, some uh, high performance oil on. Yeah, I gotta have my bearings smooth. And hopefully we'll catch some fish in a bit. But yeah, I haven't been throwing darting style lures for a while. This is pretty uh, easy to do. I usually throw something a little bit bigger. Something this size here, I'd rather, you know, put a jig and float, but I'm looking at temperature today. It's uh, 48.2. I think I could just pop it up and down and should be able to catch some fish with this. And uh, hopefully we'll fill the basket up. But right now I gotta go find them. The wind picked up and I think they left the deep water. I think they're just in search for the warm coves. And um, they're, they're ready to feed up for the freaking uh, spring. You know, they got to spawn. So, oh, I am picking up fish to the left. Right now, like to the left about and the right. Woo, uh, 20 feet out. So that should be more than enough. Curve this thing back around, but I know by lifting and dropping, I should be able to catch a few. But yeah, this dragon rod, if you like to lift and drop, kind of like uh, when I did the review of this rod, I use hair jigs, boom, and there it goes. Very, very sensitive. And what I like about the Z-Man plastic, right, the Stinger Z, they're buoyant, so technically, they can fall slow, and that's how they like it, especially in the colder water. You don't need to do a float if you calculate the right weight and the timing of your lure to drop and you'd be catching slabs. Well, it's not a slab, but hopefully we'll catch some slabs soon. Off you go. So one thing of my success for catching crappies um, the past, I guess, 
three years is learning how to use a size structure scan. Oh, there's another one. Be able to pinpoint where they're at and you just nab a lot of them. And I don't think that's what I got. Yup, I got a fat yellow perch and they're about to spawn. So you can see how big their bellies are. All right, chill, 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 look at that. Big, fat belly, oh, look at that. I gotta squeeze the belly, I bet you some eggs may come out, but let's not do that, because uh, this lake here doesn't really have that much yellow perch, and I want more yellow perch here, so off you go quick. Not eating ya. All right, circling around. But yeah, lift and drop. This rod is so sensitive. This, this is one of my favorite right now. Oh, I just had a hit, but no cigar. Wonder what happened. But let me just get back into the hot zone. It was right around here. Uh, casting into the wind, still okay. Bam, got him. That one he did not. Um, that's a picker. Oh, lucky. I was like, dude, he would fray the crap out of me. But yeah, I, I was like, why is the line car being carried away? But there's no, no, um, no strike. I was like, oh, pickerel. He just engulfed it and he swam with it. So he carried it. I just watched my line go. <laughs> so yeah, you always gotta watch the line go. And this is why I like the Varivis line. You can see that uh, it's very high contrast. You can see all the colors, right? It, there's five different colors on it. And within each color, there's 10 segments. So anyway, each, single color is 10 meters long, right? And then within the, each 10 marks within uh, that one color, you know, you see pink and then a little bit of yellow, right? Pink and a little bit of yellow. Each time you see that little uh, change, right? It's one meter. So you can use it to estimate, you know, how much line is out. So it's uh, very useful for those who uh, want to figure out how far you are. Well, for me, it's really how deep it is. Like casting far is not an issue, but when I fish in deep water, I want to know how deep things are. So when I'm fishing like a Round Valley Reservoir, when I'm vertical jigging for um, lake trout with spoons or you know some sort of a jigging spoon, right? That's how I use it for. Or if I'm out um, flounder fishing, you know, marked lines is great. That's fish. Oh, <laughs> he spit it out already. Yeah, this is still kind of winterish, so sometimes you gotta set the hook quick, and that's why I like. This uh, rod here is sensitive for me to pick those bites up. There he goes. Big slap, big old slap. Here we go. Let's go, go. <laughs> Into the basket. So earlier I was fishing with a spoon for a different episode, right? I was just showcasing how effective spoons can be on lakes too, but I think I picked the wrong time to do it. What I mean by that is uh, most of the fish are still kind of lethargic. You know, right now it's almost noon and it's 48 degrees and they're still kind of in winter mode, but they are a little bit more active than the last time I was here. And um, I covered a lot of water and it took me a while to catch those fish. And right now I switched to the jig, right? You keep in the strike zone a lot longer jigging, especially when you pick the lighter jig heads and you have the floating plastic, right? It falls a lot slower and you just lift and drop and just cover water that way. You know, same with the hair jig, right? And it's so effective. And what's important is to have that sensitive rod tip. And that's what I have here, the dragon, right? The ultralight for my shallow water and throwing these light stuff, I gotta have that super sensitive rod tip. And whew, this one right here is a banger. The price is very affordable too. The Suena brand, really, really, truly impressed, man. Truly impressed. You guys gotta give this a shot. Bait Fitness Empires. Fish, oh yeah. What? Is that bluegill? You guys are getting a little bit more active now? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. 
he, <laughs> he mounted the whole thing. So, yep, they're definitely getting a little bit active. You gotta locate where the hook's at, put this in there, and twist, boom. Easy breezy, quick, right? Let's go fish. Fish. Oh, slabby. See, I was fishing the spoon here earlier and not many fish. Oh, popped off. Uh, well, they're in there. I'm marking them, right? I think what's happening is when you pull a spoon right over them too quick and they don't want it, you're not catching them. And right there, that's not a bite right there. So yeah, oh, there's, an, oh, there's another one. This is a good spot for them crappies. These uh, open water, right? And then there's a freaking tree system right there. It just congregates them right there. Let's fish right there. Got him. Got him. Whoa, is that a big Mondo white perch? Dude, dude, look at this. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna leave this back in the water. Off you go. <sighs> All right, back to the tree system. Fish. There we go. Big slab. Slabs all over the tree. Oh, off it goes. Man, <laughs> these bigger fish right here seems to, uh, Drop quick. They can fight well. Oh, here's another one. Oh man. This is what I'm talking about. There we go. Basket. Slab it up. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Wee woo. Basket full of fish. Fish right by the trees. Oh, yeah. What do we have? Ooh, a pickerel. Oh, Ooh. all right, all right. It's all good. It's all good. Ooh, guys, Z Man, Stingers, Stinger Z. <laughs> really, really good lure. Like I said from my previous episode, the spoon didn't really do it because I'm swimming those lures, right? And it gets it out of strike zone way too fast, right? So by switching off to a jig and a soft plastic, especially the Z-Man soft plastic when they actually float, right? It slows down the rate of fall and it keeps it right in the strike zone a lot longer. And with my setup here, my Surinoya Dragon, the ultralight rod, it has a super sensitive tip. When it's dropping a slack line, right, the lure, um, when the fish bites it, I still could pick it up using that sensitive rod tip. And when I set the hook, you know, it has a very nice bend, not to rip it out those crappies mouth and allow you to land those nice fish. So yeah, this is a great setup and I have to recommend to everyone who loves crappy fishing, especially if you guys are in New Jersey, right? You guys know I have a lot of shallow waters here. Best way to fish is smaller 1 16th ounce or 1 15th because I'm using the Z-Man mushroom head, right? They have this odd 1 15th ounce, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, 1 16th, 1 15th ounce, small little shad, dark shadding style plastic and just lift and drop, lift and drop. You find them on your fish finder, size structure scan, cast it right into where you see them at and uh, enjoy.
Uh, late winter, it could be very tough, right? They don't want to chase too far and this is super effective. But very soon in spring, you can swim a lot faster. You can put different types of tails on, some uh, paddle tail, grub tail, and it'll chase a lot further. But um, if you guys are up north and you guys have a couple more weeks of cold spells, this is a technique you would want to use. Anyway, folks, I thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Get your surrounding stuff at Bay Fitness Empires. To lose.